two hours, three hours without eating, I would feel bad. While in Ramadan, it was 18 hours this time in the summer and you would feel okay. And really the nights as well during the Ramadan, seeing all the people together, united, all the people that come for the Taraweeh, even in the morning, all the brothers. And you see like, there's some feeling, a strong feeling between the Muslims in the month of Ramadan. The Christians, when they heard that you are so long, you don't eat and drink, well, what they were saying, if, if you had any contact in the subject? They had a little bit. The Christians, when they don't actually do the fasting, they have some periods before the Easter, they call it fasting, but it's like, okay, just, I won't eat meat on the Fridays before that, I just eat fish instead. <laughs> and that's fasting, so... <laughs> So when you speak to them about Ramadan, what's really fasting for God, the, that's something that touches a lot of the Christians when they hear about it. All the comments of Allah are perfect. But what, what is the mostly important that we should pay attention to those subjects to speak to Islam? The thing in Islam that really touched me, I think, a lot is Already, the rules in Islam is clear. What is right, what is wrong, what is halal, what is haram. It's clear, so there's no thinking, oh, what I do, can it be good, can it be not good, how it's seen. And as well, really, it's discovering in Islam is always the ikhlas, the niya must always be pure and must be good. And this is something that touches because you can give millions to poor people, and just think in yourself like, ah, like that the people will see me, they say, oh, how generous man he is. But with Islam, really, the most important is have the near only for God, to please Allah. And that is something very important, I think, that touched me very much. And as well as all that speaks about the good behavior you must, you must have in all situations, the way to speak to people, the way to be with people. And I think if every Muslim started just following half of how much you should be in good behavior, that's described in Quran and Sunnah, I think that many people would embrace Islam just because of this. Uh, what do you think the condition of the Islamic world? I mean, uh... Of course, Islam is perfect, but the Muslims, yeah, the Muslims have something it, yeah. uh, wrong with us. And even in Turkey, in Switzerland, in Muslims. Mm -hmm. um, well, of course, we have some advantages that we are honesty, frank with people. If you compare yeah. with the Europeans, more helpful. How are you calling English? I don't know. But could you talk in this? What's the condition of the Islamic world and uh, advantages and advantages of Muslims? Um, I think in the Islamic world today, the situation has problems because there's too much of the Muslims being divided between themselves. One say, I'm Salafi, I'm Sufi, no, we don't speak with him. And that, I think, is the big problem of the Muslim world today. At the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you wouldn't see the Muslim saying, I'm this, I'm that. You're Muslim and it stops. We're all Muslims, we're all brothers. We should help each other. That's one of the main problems I see in the Muslim world today. The other problem is in the Muslim world, people turned away from Islam very much. You'd see many people, I think when you compare with the Muslims in the, living in the non-Muslim countries in the West, they come more like straight understand really what Islam is because they in their everyday life they have to look for the halal food find a place maybe sometimes it's hard with work to do namaz and they still do it they catch hard to Islam they stay hard following while some people in the Muslim countries it's easy for them maybe and they don't even realize why they do some of the things like they pray, but they don't really realize how much it's worth to be able to pray. They don't realize the blessing it is to be Muslim. 
when you live in a kafir country, for example, you see the people around you and you think, Alhamdulillah, I'm Muslim. You think, of course, as well, how you could call them to Islam. But first thing you say is, Alhamdulillah, I'm Muslim. In a Muslim country, maybe you don't realize as much the blessing it is that Allah gave you Hidayah and you are maybe not thankful enough for this. Uh, the main ways that we must use to spread Islam in the world, I think, to start with already is to work on ourselves. Because if we are not straight in Islam, what will the other people think? If they think these people, they behave badly, maybe they might cheat you, maybe they might be not behaved appropriately in the Islamic way, and then the other people will see that's a Muslim, and even though that is not true, because Islam is perfect and the Muslim is not, the Muslim is the mirror of Islam to the world. So we must, as the first thing is work on ourselves. There's many bad experiences. Someone, a non-Muslim tourist, might come to a Muslim country on holiday. Could be to Turkey, could be to Malaysia, Tunisia, Arab countries. What will be sometimes the first impressions he have? He will go in the taxi, the driver will drive him five times around the town before he brings him to his hotel. It could be in the shop, in a restaurant where somebody will cheat him. And even though, of course, that is not Islam, it's the image that he would have of Islam and of the Muslims. Did you go to a Muslim country? Ah, yeah, they cheated me in the taxi, they cheated me in the restaurants, in the shops. To start with, that I think must really be changed. And people in the Muslim countries, especially the touristic places, must think that, so what, they can win a bit of money on the tourist, but they can win much more in the Akhirat, in the next life, if they are correct with people, if they are good to the people who come, and show a good image of Islam, and maybe, inshallah, bring them to Islam. That is one thing already that we must work on a lot. Then another very important point is when people come, especially, I, sp I speak, that's what I saw in Istanbul, but I'm sure it's the same in many other places. Let's take the Sultan Ahmed Jami. You get thousands of tourists every day visiting the mosque and no one, no one to tell about Islam. People show the mosque was built at this date, this date, okay, that's great, but who is there to talk about Islam to these tourists who come, who visit the mosque? What better occasion is there to talk about Islam? We Muslims, in general, in all countries, are not enough going to speak. It's like, we don't realize how important it is to speak to people of Islam.